here's our next lecture on quadratic equations. In this case, we're going to try and solve quadratic equations. But before we do that, we're going to want to take a general look. Uh, what does that mean, a general look? Well, there's some specifics about quadratic equations that you need to know so that when you solve them, you have a kind of a way to look at them in a more sensible manner. In other words, where it makes more sense to you. All right, again, a quick description. If you were to draw a quadratic equation, it can look like this, perhaps, or it may look like this, or it may look like this, or it may look like this. And notice, in some cases, the quadratic equation will cross the x-axis. So remember, these are your x-axis right there, x-axis, x-axis, there's your x-axis, there's your x-axis. So in some cases, the quadratic equation, or at least the graphical representation of the equation, will cross the x-axis, and those are called your roots or your solutions to the quadratic equation. But in some cases, they will not, like in this case, it doesn't cross, so there's no root or no solutions. In this case, even though it opens downward, there are two roots, and in this case, there is only one root right there. It actually only touches the x-axis at one particular point. It opens downward. So in this case, there's only one solution or one root. There's none there. There's two there. There's two there. And how do you know that ahead of time before you start solving the quadratic equation? Well, there is a way in which you can figure it out. So again, let's write the general form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Let me show you this example. y is equal to x squared let's say uh, minus 4x plus 3. So the question may be, well, first of all, if you were to graph it, what would it look like? Does it open upward? Does it open downward? Uh, does it have roots? In other words, does the parabola that corresponds to the equation cross the x-axis in some way? And if it does, what are those roots? Well, one way to figure out if it has roots at all is by calculating what we call the determinant. And by definition, the determinant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Now, b, a, and c are the coefficients of the different ter terms in your quadratic equation. In this case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to 3. And by using this example, let's calculate the determinant and see if this equation actually has roots or solutions. So d is equal to b squared, since b is a negative 4, we take negative 4 quantity squared minus 4 times a, a is 1, and c in this case is 3. So this is equal to 16, minus 4 times 3 is minus 12, this is equal to 4. All right, my determinant is 4. What does that mean? Well, what that means is if the determinant is greater than 0, that means you'll have two roots. So in this case, our example, d is indeed greater than 0, it's 4, which means that I'll have a problem that either looks like this or that looks like this, where it crosses the x-axis twice. If the determinant is equal to 0, then there's only one root. So then you would have something that looks perhaps like this, where it just touches the x-axis but that doesn't actually cross it, so there's only one root, and if the determinant is less than zero, then there's no roots. In other words, the parabola does not cross the x-axis at all, and the example on the board that looks like that would be something like that. So that, if I were to have an equation corresponding to this particular graph right here, and I were to calculate the determinant, I would find that the result would be less than zero, so you would know there's no roots. All right. Another thing that you can figure out is where the vertex may be. The point, the lowest point on the parabola, or the highest point, depending upon if it opens upward or opens downward. And the vertex would have an x and a y coordinate. And if I write the x coordinate as x sub v and the y coordinate as y sub v, I could find the x coordinate of the vertex by simply saying the x coordinate of the vertex is equal to minus b over 2a. So again, by using the coefficients of the three terms, I can figure out where that particular point is and where the vertex is of the parabola. So since b is a negative 4, I take a negative times a negative 4, divided by 2 times a, since a here is 1, that means minus times a minus a plus, that's 4 over 2, or 2. The x-coordinate of my parabola 
is 2. Now, of course, I don't have a graph on there that represents my example, but at least I know that this particular example will have two roots because my determinant is greater than 0, and I know that the axis of symmetry of my parabola because the vertex is right on the axis of symmetry, or the axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex, however you want to look at it, and I know that that's x equals 2 in this particular case. So before you start solving quadratic equations, you can realize then very quickly, you can determine if you have roots at all, and you can determine where your axis of symmetry is. And as an example, if I were to graph this, I know that it opens upward because my a is positive. I know that the axis of symmetry is at x equals x equals 2, so I can draw a dashed line. And I know that I have two roots. I know that it opens upward, so I know that it probably looks something like this with two roots like that. Okay, so now they have kind of a general. Let's do some specific solutions for quadratic equations.